Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, this is the 15th video in my Python programming series, and we are going to be talking about some more methods that we can use on strings and on lists. These methods are, I'm going to put them in a comment so that I remember, is the dot find and the dot count method. And now these can be used on strings and on lists. So let's go right ahead and give an example. So the dot find method, this is a uh, very useful method in Python. It's not in a lot of other languages, so it is specific to Python. So what we can do is we're going to make a variable, we're going to call it string. Now we can set this equal to whatever we want. So let's just say hello for this case for simplicity. And then we're simply going to print string, oops, if I spelt it correctly, string dot find and then inside of the dot find brackets here so the argument for this method we are going to put in what we want to find so we want to see if we can find the indice of any of these letters here so if I put in L you'll see what happens is I get 2 and that's because there's an L the first L in the string is found at the indice of 2 just like that um, now you may be confused right now, I haven't completely explained it, but that's fine. So, as you can see, we have two L's in the string, right? Now when I put in this L in the brackets, it gives me a value of 2. Now that is where the first L is found in the string. If I put in O, for example, you'll see it gives me 4. And there's only one O in the string, so it gives me the value of where that O is, which is the fourth indice of the string the fourth index. Uh, if I put in H, you see we get zero. And now notice what happens if I put in a number or a letter that's not actually in the string. So I'll put in seven, for example, the string seven. And you see we actually get negative one. That's because if Python does not find that inside of the string, it's going to tell you that it's negative one. So rather than zero, it gives you negative one just like that. So this is useful because maybe we want to check in a password, for example, if it contains a certain element. So maybe if there's a dash in there, we don't want them to be able to use that password. Or maybe we're not allowing a certain character, or we need a certain character to be in a password or a string. This is where dot .find is useful, um, and it'll tell us if that's in the string or not. Now there's actually another useful uh, string method here that is dot .count. Now it does a similar thing except instead of finding the index of the letter, it counts how many of them there are in the string. So now we're going to go to dot .count. So we'll go dot .count like this. And again, inside of the brackets, we're just going to put a string. Uh, so let's do L. And you see if we F5 here, we get the value of 2. That's because obviously there are two L's in our string. Now I'm just going to type a bunch of random letters and show you that this does work for all kinds of things. So if I type in A, for example, we'll see how many A's I've typed. We have six A's in that string. Now let's try a Z. I know I didn't use Z here, I'm pretty sure at least. Oops, that's my bad. Uh, we've forgotten a uh, parentheses there. Sorry, okay. And we get zero, right? So instead of negative one, it counts and it says, well, there are zero of them in the string, so we're going to return zero. Again, we can use this to find if there's a certain character in the string. So if we say you can only have a maximum of three numbers in your string, well, we could count and we could say if there are whatever, how many numbers, right? Um, the dot find is different than this because it actually tells us where that is. So if I do dot find again, and now maybe I put in an A. Well, we know there's six A's in the string, but which A is this one going to give us? So it says five, because that is the first place that an A occurred in the string. So we see here at the fifth indice or index, that's where the first A is. It's not going to give us the A's from back here. If we wanted to find the A's back here, we would have to use a for loop, and we'd have to loop through the string in different parts of the string to find where all the A's were. Um, again, yeah, so that's how you use dot .find and dot .count. It's very useful if you want to check certain things. So I'll show you an example here if we wanted to check a string, how we would use the dot .count method or the dot .find method. So I'm going to say if string dot .count, and I don't want to allow any, let's say, underscores in my string. 
is greater than zero. So that just means uh, if it's, I guess we could also say not equal to zero. So if it has, if it contains at least one of these underscores, then we're not going to allow it. So we're going to print to the screen, not good. Right, just like that, okay? Just to show how this works. Now here, instead of actually having a preset string, we're just going to get input from the console so we can do this a few times and see. So input will say, please type something as the prompt like that and otherwise so an else statement here if it doesn't contain any underscores we will print good like that okay so now i'm gonna type hello that was our first string and oh what happened there good so we get good sorry i don't know something glitched uh in the program there we'll rerun it i'm not sure what happened there f5 please type something. I type hello. There we go. Now we get good. I'm not sure what happened in the other one. Okay. So now let's do it again. And this time we're going to include an underscore. So we'll do underscore underscore. Hello. It's going to say not good because it counted these underscores and said, well, there is more than zero underscores. So it's not good. And then same thing. If we put an underscore in the middle of the word, or we put a ton of underscores. So H E L O whatever, just like that. Uh, not good because there's underscores in the word just like that and yeah that's pretty much how the dot find and the dot count methods work there's a ton of uses for these and it's really useful um, that they have this method because in a lot of other programming languages they don't have this dot count and dot find so it makes it a lot harder if you're trying to find how many things are in a string or if you're trying to find the index of a letter so i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed if you did please like and subscribe and i will see you again tomorrow for another video